By now you may have heard of cordyceps, the fungus among us that can take over the brain of an ant. But is there such a threat in the kingdom Animalia? The horsehair worm is a parasite that bears no ill will. But it will make an unfortunate mantis very ill. Still, the journey from egg to host isn't an easy one, and the worm pays its dues to get a free ride through life, death, and taxonomy. Welcome back to Life, Death, and Taxonomy. It's your 30 minutes of interesting animal information. I'm Joe. And I'm Carlos. Thank you to Cassie for the creation of this theme song. To hear more of Cassie's music, please search Cassie Michelle on YouTube or Spotify. I keep saying this, and I guess it's appropriate because you will you are listening to it right it now. Is, it is still playing and will fade yeah. out soon. Um, yes, yeah, so thank you to Johanna for the creation of this week's artwork. Uh, you're not listening to that. But you can see it by visiting us at our home on the web at ldtaxonomy.com. And a very special thank you to our patrons, to Tristan Taylor, Jesse Raspolich, Kel Raspolich, and, Tr- and Richard Kaspar. Thank you so much for your support. It's greatly appreciated. Thanks for helping us keep the lights on. And today we're talking about a parasite on the prowl. But more on that later. I did not come up with a, and today we're talking about, that was off the cuff. Parasite on the prowl. Um, there's worms in this one. Yeah. There's warm worms in them, their hills. <laughs> in them, their hills. The, the hills have worms. Um, we're talking about the horse hair worm. Doesn't that sound delightful? Mm-hmm. Well, it's going to get more delightful as the episode continues. Um, uh, it's also called the Gordiacea, uh, the Gordian worm, mm-hmm. uh, or hair snake, which is my favorite Metal Gear Solid movie starring John Travolta in a dress. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have not played Metal Gear, any of the Metal Gear games, and I've never seen Hairspray, so... <laughs> <laughs> it's just two two things I just pulled out. Um, <clears throat> but we're going to call it Aunt I- Ein Strand of hair. <laughs> okay. Get it? We make this joke every single time. It's a parasite. Yeah. Um, and we're also going to call it the colon dwarf. Get excited because it's going to get weird. It is going to get weird. I'm going to get all up you in your bum. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes it's gonna get weird let's taxonomize this it's i mean it's gonna get weird immediately because this taxonomy is a weird one we've got lots mm-hmm. of categories that we don't usually mention the kingdom is one you know love and are in animalia and right off the bat we're gonna take a hard left turn and go to sub kingdoms what's a sub kingdom well it's it's what i'm about you to get sub sandwiches yeah, it's uh, Burger King bought Subway, and now it's Sub Kingdom. Um, or Atlantis. Oh, a kingdom you can only reach by sub. Yeah. Yeah. Um. The so the Sub Kingdom is Eumetazoa. I did. Eumetazoa, and she was a nice gal. <laughs> <laughs> As opposed to the other Zoas that you have met. Um, it is a, uh, uh, it's a sister group to the sponges. Hmm. Um, the clade. So we're, 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 it's going to be a little while before we even get to the phylum. So the clade is Parahoxazoa. Um, there's, it all, it's also in a second clade called Nephrozoa. And a third clade called bilateria so it's bi- all be on the test bilateral yes um the super phylum we're not even the phylum we're super phylum is actis actis that's weird e c d y 
Ecti. Yeah, Ecti Sozoa. Um, and now Phylum. Finally, Phylum uh, is the Nematomorpha. And nematodes, right? Yes. Um, the uh, class is Gordioidae. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally what it is. Gordioidae. That's um that was a lot more I've ne I didn't say it out loud. I typed it and didn't even practice it. And that was a lot more fun to say than I thought it was going to be. Um So I'll say it one more time. Gordioidae. Uh it sounds like a yodel. It does. Gordioidae. Um the file the family, sorry, is um core Dodidae. Cordodidae. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, the genus is Cordotus, and the species is Formosinus. Cordotus, Formosinus. Form of Sinus. Form of Samus. Playing through mm -hmm. Metroid Prime. So, since we're in the business of, of business of naming things, it's time for my favorite part of the show. C -c 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 Critter groups. The Part of the show where I ask you, Joe, a question, and that question is the same every time. What is the name of a group of this animal, or what is the term of entry, or what is the collective noun? We don't have to do a nitty-gritty nomenclature this time because it's a worm. What do you talk what do you call a group of worms, Joe? Is it A, a clat of worms? B a sprout of worms? C a wriggle of worms, or D a grut of worms? Grut. Mm hmm Wriggle grut. What were the first two? Clat and sprout. Oh my gosh. I the, man, these are sprout, I guess I guess is a Wriggle and Sprout are both real words. The other two I've never heard before. Grut? I guess I'm going with grut, final answer. Incorrect. The answer was clat. Is that a real word? Like, what is a clat? I don't It's a group of worms. Ah. <laughs> uh, I, I find out what the answer is, and then I create the other three. And when I wrote sprout and wriggle, I'm like, it's going to stand out like a sore thumb if I don't come up with a word right now. And so grut was the what i came up with and i double checked to make sure it was not a slur <laughs> yeah so it's a clat of worms isn't that tasty it does sound good like uh like a clatter like a platter of worms up on the roof there's a, there arose such a clatter a rose such a <laughs> yeah. ladder um from the rose such a ladder company Mm -hmm. Would you like to hear what this guy looks like? I sure would. All right. Uh, well, forest, there's actually not sure would. There's not that much to it. Sherwood Forest. Mm -hmm. um, this is a long, thin, wriggly black or brown worm. It <laughs> looks it, it looks like a piece of string or a shoelace. Looks oh, like a horse hair. Or or yes, like like a horse hair. Um. Or, I, I guess, a hair snake. Which is... I mean, I think something that only Medusa really has to worry about. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's like, a, it's, it's like a piece of string that wants to live in your insides. Um, it's a very close look at its head with like an electron microscope. Uh, shows that it has a small light sensing hole. And two fleshy mandibles for latching onto things. I'm sure they're that's uh vestigial they don't need to latch on anything don't worry about it definitely nothing nefarious happening there um females tend to have a rounded and slightly quote-unquote slightly swollen posterior while males don't so the ladies got more junk in day trunk hey that's consistent yes um <laughs> and uh i mean that, i mean if you're picturing a black piece of string uh Curled up on the ground, 
then you're picturing you're effectively picturing this worm. Kind of looks like a long earthworm that's been dried up in the sun for a long time. <laughs> uh, I got those all over the all over the sidewalks in my neighborhood the, right now. So uh, it's just it hits really close to home, you know. It but does, it does, literally. This is actually right one of time. the this is actually a, one of the longer um, uh, members of this of horsehair worms. Actually, there's lots mm -hmm. of different kinds of horsehair worms. So this is on the longer side. Um, so how long is it, Joe? Good question. Welcome to the Beloved Measure Up segment, the official listeners' favorite part of the show, especially since we haven't held an election in like two years. The part of the show when we present the animal size and dimensions in relatable terms through a quiz that's fun for the whole family. It's also part of the show that's introduced by you when you send an audio of yourself saying, singing, or chittering the words measure up into ldtaxonomy at gmail.com. We don't have a new measure up intro this week. Dag gum. So we're going to dip into the archives. Uh, in here, one of, the, one of uh, the greatest hits. And when I say greatest hits... I really mean all of them because they're all great. I, there's none that I would say we're not going to do that one. That one's not very good. They're all very good. So like let's when they hear were, some. Like when they were trying to decide what, what what songs to put on the Genesis Greatest Hits album, they're like, we don't have enough room on the CD to put all of the songs. <laughs> yeah. Well, without further ado, the listeners' favorite part of the show. <laughs> This one was a recent one, right? It was, yeah. That was, and, that's uh, a Nora. That's a Nora. Uh, uh, a, a Nora no. uh, gem. It isn't. Nora did did put the team on her back for quite a while, but this was from Melissa. She has the crazy old oscillating fan in the background. Yeah, we we uh, inquired about cool, the fan. She has a cool job in forensics. Um. And I hope she's still listening. Uh, although that one that one was sent in by Melissa, but it was clearly a robot. Yeah, was, that's, uh, that's clearly a robot AI. designed and programmed by Melissa. Yes. From fr from forensics. And isn't it kind of sick that um, it has an oscillating fan attachment to keep everyone cool? Oh, or to keep itself cool. All, all robots that's true. need that's a true. cooling system. So it just <laughs> it just rigged this massive fan over it <laughs> to keep yes. it cool. That's how computers work, right? Uh huh. Well, thanks, thanks, Melissa. She sent in one of like many, all at once. So it it was a boon time for us then. Think about think about those times. The the ladies in general have been putting the team on their back in terms of sending in measure up intro. So we got to hear from the fellas. Fellas, I know you're listening. You gotta, you gotta send in some, yeah, some measure up intros. Uh, you tell, you tell those fellas, Joe. The fellas, the bros, the blokes, um, the boys. Um, let's talk about length. They're ninety centimeters. Yeah, how many that is in freedom units? Thirty five. Point four inches. Already did the math. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, how many heights of pum pumuckle? The Shetland pony go into a horsehair worm. I think we've already done that. Is that to the withers? I think I feel like I have done the small pony before. Uh, yeah, to the withers. Here's a hint. Pumuckle is a contender for world's smallest horse. He lives in Germany where he tours kindergartens and nursing homes. I can't think of a cuter horse or a cuter job for a horse to have. I can think of cuter names, though. Pumuckle. Pumuckle? It kind of sounds like a gnome's name. Yeah, it sounds like an impish, like, jester character <laughs> that uh, that appears in and out of existence like the Cheshire Cat and, like, sets things on fire. So here's another hint there. We're going for, we're, we're, we got a fraction, a decimal 
Um, so that's going to be important to have. Um, I'm going to say one. One even? Would you like to add any mustard on it? Or 1. take any 1. mustard away? 1.1. 1. 1. Because horses. I'm pretty sure we've done this, and the Shetland Pony was three feet at the Withers. Mm-hmm. And this is 35.4 inches, which is 0.6 inches away from being three feet. So I'm just going to say 1.1. 1. 1. 1. And I, th- I feel like that's that'll still be in the, the nursing school victory zone. <clears throat> okay. Final answer? Yeah. The correct answer is 1.8 pomuckles. That does not sound like a nursing school victory at all. Pomuckle is 20 inches or 50 centimeters tall. And 90 divided by 50 is 1.8. No, that is a 61%. Not... Man. <clears throat> I was point. Seven off, but yet I got a D. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And that's not going to cut it. You're not going to get to be a nurse with that. Um, If we had a new measure up intro, you would have gotten 5%. Would that have put you over the edge? Absolutely not. (laughs) Well? No, 5% will take you from a D. Wait, is it 5% to my total score or 5% to my... No, it still wouldn't have gotten. Yeah, no, you would. No, no, you would have had a sixty percent. It would have been a sixty-five yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was thinking maybe it was five percent of the total score, but no. So there are. Uh, let's talk about the size of the phylum. Um, since this is a worm, and it doesn't have a ton of heft, it doesn't have a ton of girth. So we're going to have to go to get deep, get deep with the uh, other metric. So there are 351 known species in the phylum Nematophora. Or mor- Morpha. Nematomorpha. Yeah. So how many species of freshwater Nematomorpha are estimated to be extant in, in, the, in the world? Currently living. Here's a hint. It's about the same number of species as there are feet in the height of the Aflac Tower in Rowley, Iowa. I didn't know there was an Aflac Tower. Well, Aflac certainly has to do business somewhere. Or is it, it the Aflac well Tower? And is it just where, where, where Ben broods as Batman? Yeah. Wayne Tower, in his <laughs> mind, it's it's really Affleck Tower, Affleck Tower, but to him, it's Wayne Tower. <laughs> Maybe Ben Affleck, Ben Affleck, has a basement underneath Affleck Tower. Mm. And that's where he broods. That's where he broods and and does things that he feels are Batman things, but it's really just like two rubber bands tied together. <laughs> um, <clears throat> what was the how many species did you say were in the 350 known species but how many are estimated to be to be currently living so basically we know a certain amount but we think there's probably more oh um, we'll say 600 then final answer Oh, wait, and what am I dividing this by? <laughs> what is the what's my what's my the my no, known variable? You're just guessing because the known the, the okay. known you don't have a known variable, but your hint is that uh it's the same number of feet, same number of species as there are feet in the height of the Aflac Tower. All right. So you're well, guessing basically what 600 feet this tower is yes i am count i'm guessing 600 but i literally have the nematomorpha page open in my browser and it's in the first paragraph so i'm gonna stick with 600 but i know that i'm very wrong <laughs> <laughs> oh so i guess i shouldn't ask for a final answer uh yes the correct number is 2000 uh in fact the aflac tower is a 1999 uh, feet uh, thereabouts 
But yeah, there are 2,000 species estimated to be in nematomorpha. I want to know how you find 300 and, and surmise there must be many, like a few times more that we haven't found. Like six times more. They call it a conservative estimate. Yeah. It's like, yeah, uh, it's. I guess what you th- what happened was they found 351. There was no and they and counting, and there's so much variability in these. In these worms, that they're like, and they're so hard to find because you got to dunk something and you know you got to vivisect or dissect something in order to get at it. So like, phew, there's got to be thousands. Yeah, um, there's a. I can pay forty dollars to read exactly why they think it's two thousand, and I'm not gonna. <laughs> uh, fair enough. But that's all I got for that. Do you have any fast facts before we get into the th- long fact? The th- thick and long facts. <laughs> um, it's actually a thin and long fact. Um. I actually only I'm not I'm not gonna spend too much time on the fast facts uh, since we're already pretty far in and I think most of it would be treading on what you're gonna talk about so we'll talk about the fact that it lives in Japan Nepal and Taiwan which is odd to me because those are three small countries that surround a much larger country <laughs> Uh, and I'm wondering why it's not in China. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good question. Well, maybe it's, like, it's where the other like seven, uh, 1,700 ones are. It's like this worm is in Mexico, Canada, and the Bahamas. And that's it. <laughs> it's like, how, how did it, what? How did this specific species of worm make it to these three very different, different places without also being in the middle (laughs) don't know but that's uh, yeah yeah um it it lives in east asia and uh if i talked about its diet if i talked about its lifestyle uh, life lifestyle (laughs) 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 this is worms lifestyle choices i just can't get behind but it can get behind lots of things (laughs) (laughs) I'll, We're gonna okay. To play play us out, keyboard cat. <laughs> I don't want to say anything else. <laughs> Let's talk about the major fact. I called this one parasite in the prowl, but you could also say praying away. The parasite that would be a good one. Using sure. The, uh, yeah. So the horsehair worm goes on a parasitic journey that spans several hosts and gets eaten twice. So. Eggs are laid in a river. The uh, horsehair worm eggs are laid in a river or a pond and soon hatch into larva. Little larva and the little larva do their best impression of a tasty morsel in order to be gobbled up by a small water insect. Water nymphs, as in the aquatic stage of development for many insect species, not the Greek mythological creature, um, eat the horsehair larva before growing wings and then leaving the pond. So they hitch a ride on a small insect that leaves the pond one day. Uh, Once the horsehair larva is eaten, it develops a hard outer shell to avoid digestion and then waits. That's something I suggest everyone does if they ever get eaten. That is is some good advice. (laughs) Develop a hard outer shell. You need a pod of some kind. An anti digestion uh, pod. You can actually, like, preppers probably already have those. Yeah. Although I kind of don't want to live, continue living if I get eaten. But I mean, if you develop a hard anti digestion pod, then you'll probably just make, th- make it through the GI tract mentally and emotionally scarred, but otherwise okay. That's true. Just don't put any windows in your pod. Oh, no, 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 no. But, I mean, it would be, <laughs> what, pitch black? That's true. It's like That's you're true. not really going to see anything. So don't, so with don't any, sweat it. What uh, with say. any luck, 
Um, the host insect is on the menu for the parasite's prime at paradise, the praying mantis. And that sentence was bad for audio because there's a lot of popping peas and I don't have a pop filter. Uh, so once the host is eaten by a mantis, the hairworm reaches adulthood. This is where it really begins. This is, this is where the real Elden Ring begins. <laughs> this, is where, um, this is where Dark Souls begins. Uh, it, it grows up to many times the length of its host, much to the chagrin of its host. It's not good for you to have a parasite that's bigger than you. It's not, it's not swell, uh, but it does swell. Yeah. Um, which uh, the, the host, mantises, I looked this up, mantises might be only around like 10 centimeters. And this worm can reach nine times that. Um, so that's not fun. Host mantids and sometimes crickets uh, will, sometimes, will stop growing uh, and may, ne- may never reach full size uh, when, they, when they consume this wor- uh, worm. So now the worm has the nutrients it needs to you know, grow in length and just thrive as a nasty little horse hair in the middle of this bug. Uh, but it needs water to reproduce, right? The eggs are laid in rivers and ponds. Uh, so how does it do that? Especially since you consider uh, mantises usually don't like hanging out by the water because it's a good place for predators and fish, like fish and birds, to uh, catch them. So, And also, you know, mantises can drown if they get into the water. So they don't, they don't like the water. So to get the mantis in the right place, the worm will have to hijack the controls, a la The Last of Us, mm. which, which we've been talking a lot about in the Patreon pre-shows. Or so Pacific rec- Rim. Pacific Rim? It's like, yeah, now the praying mantis is the, is the Jaeger, and the, and the worm is the pilot. Right? Yeah, I guess so. (laughs) So researchers have found that infected mantids are attracted to horizontally polarized light. Uh, Light polarization happens in nature when light reflects off the surface of water. I know because I have polarized glasses so I can see fish better while I'm fishing. So I was trying to like do some research as to what like polarized light is um we talked about it in the dung beetle episode it yeah it really is it's like um polarization is like the the light wave is absorbed uh like in one way and then uh it's reflected in another or passes through in another so there's a i saw there's a demonstration on youtube of like light going through a fish tank and the 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 person in the video is like polarizing it uh and horizontally polarized light um you'll be able to see it see the light uh um coming out of the sides of the fish tank but you won't be able to see it coming out of the top and then if you switch the polarization to vertical, the opposite. You'll see it. So basically, it's absorbing the light horizontally. Uh, so in this case, um, <clears throat> light pol- polarization happens n- in nature when light reflects off of the water surface. Um, and I, I wish I, I didn't have enough time to really like d- dig into like polarization and stuff. But... Uh, that that that's all you need to know is that like this happens on water, uh, uh, horizontal light polarization. So the mantis, you, you would think that we would know polars because we also had to talk about it for the reindeer episode. And sometimes the science in this show is what is like. I just I learn what I need to know to explain it the best that I can, and then it immediately just empties out of my brain like that <laughs> and how electricity works, like ohms and 
and watts versus voltage. I, I cannot remember that stuff. It just does not stick, no matter how many times I learn it so that I can try to explain it on this show. So, yeah. Polarized yeah. light is polarized light, right? Um, yeah. I mean, it, polarized, light polarization is just like absorbing. Some light is absorbed. Some light passes through. Uh, and that's why, you know, your light, your glasses work because it polarizes the light, which means it absorbs some of the, some of it. So you can see like the light that's bouncing off of the water. So that's good for, to know if you're a fisherman, but in this case, the mantis wanders aimlessly until it sees light that reflects off of a pond and then jumps in. So the, the, the worm is hijacking it to look for a light source in the, in a particular kind of light source that comes from reflective water. Uh, the horsehair worm leaves the mantis and lays its eggs. In most cases, the host washes away and drowns, but mantids that survive may live and recover from their parasite incursion. So that's good. If this, <laughs> If this mantis like wakes up in some water, parasite free, and just like, why did I do that? And manages to get out, then it can have a, a, a better time than it had before. It can lead a fulfilling life afterwards. Yeah, he's a little bit smaller, but he can <laughs> than he than he should have been. But yeah. Do you think there's like a, like a group for mantises that have been hijacked? Uh, almost assuredly not because they don't have higher brain function, that but they would allow them to reflect, but, uh, but in that kind of way, they do have congregations. So we do need to remember that. <laughs> um, and congregations oh, yeah. tend to have small groups. So I'm sure there is a small group for it's like, hi, my name is Anthony. Hi, Anthony. I, <laughs> I was, I had a, a a horsehair worm six times the size of my body and my intestine for six weeks. And I haven't looked back since. <laughs> but we also suggest, we also establish that they cannot be communing members of their congregation because they cannot reflect on their sins and on their, uh, on their, um, their salvation in order to in good conscience, take communion without incurring the wrath that comes with it. Hey, I didn't say they were co they were a congregation of uh, uh, Protestants. <laughs> <laughs> they're well, they're a congregation of something. A, oh, well, they're a congregation of something that prays. Yeah, there's lots of those. I fair. I, that's fair enough. I'm sure there's well, some. I'm I sure got. it's animism. Like it's got to be something like that, right? <laughs> like like worship the beanstalk or something like that. I don't, I don't know. And and in and in the beanstalk worship, there they have no scruples about um, needing introspection in order to take beanstalk communion. So, you know, <laughs> that's them. <laughs> okay, that's all I got. All right. Well, that's the horse hair worm. Uh, look up a picture of it and uh, have a great time. Mm -hmm. Because some of the oh. pictures are just of like seven of them all knotted up together, and it's. It is interesting to see videos of people dunking mantises in a cup of water and watching the the horsehair worm think it's in a pond. Now that's great. When you got a when you got a parasite and uh you know it's bumming a ride in the bum of a bug and you trick it into like laying an egg in a glass, you idiot. Got him. <laughs> <laughs> That was Although not the, cloacal escape time, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> the video I was talking about was uh, the video. One of the videos I was watching was like, now we got to realize that parasites are not evil. This, they're just, you know, they have adapted to this is how they survive. It doesn't mean I can't have a good time thinking they're gross. Just like it doesn't mean I can't have a good time thinking sharks are scary. <laughs> Well, it's like, congratulations, sir. You've outsmarted a relative of the sea sponge. <laughs> well, yeah, 
that's interesting. Um, I bet you that praying mantis is like, thank heavens. <laughs> Get it? Yeah. Um, all right. So that was the horsehair worm for you out there in Podcastia. Uh, head towards that horizontally polarized light. Develop an anti-digestion pod and hijack your way to a better life like the horsehair worm here in life, death, and taxonomy. <laughs> Hey Taxonomy Titans, I just want to remind you that we now have a Patreon. Patrons can see full video episodes and get shoutouts on the show. But ultimately, it's a way for you to help us cover some costs and get even better. Still, reviews are the best way to help us grow. So if you haven't left one yet, we'd really love to hear from you. As always, thanks for listening and engaging. podcast <laughs> i previously had and don't climb up the cloacal vents of a congregation but then i changed that yeah, do did you find that they enter that way because i thought that they entered by ingestion but they come out they come out through the cloaca yeah. so i'm glad that's why i'm glad i changed it. well they're fair enough